Hey, what is up? Um, oh gosh, I hate, you know, I hate those intros, and yet I do them so often. Um, so what's going on, guys? It's, it's me and you again. We're, we're chilling out. We're hanging out. Um, uh, Wind Waker's not going anywhere. I know that I uploaded Wind Waker one after the other, but I, I decided, you know, hey, it's later in the night now. I record it all day, and I'm going to take this time to just relax, chill out with you guys, play a little Ocarina of Time. Everyone knows this game, or you should know this game. If this is your first time seeing this game, I hope I can do it justice so that you can enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I went up, I went ahead and named us Marsh, uh, cause I don't know, I kind of like it, I'm feeling it, Marsh. Marsh, um, and yeah, so don't worry, turf is not going anywhere. So I'm not gonna do a lot of reading, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and waste our time, uh, with the, with the, with the plot. We know what happens, it's Ocarina of Time, right? Um, but I'll read this stuff. I'll read the important stuff. I'm known as the Great Deku Tree, the Deku Tree of Life, of Passion. The children of the forest, the Kokiri, live here with me. That's sweet. Each Kokiri has his or her own guardian fairy. This we know. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. Man, you know, Link in general is a, is a lazy kid. I can relate. I was a, I am a lazy kid. Uh, I'm not really a kid anymore. I'm like in the middle, but you know, it's kind of. Can I skip this? We know this, um, but yeah, obviously, like, this was when, this is when, like, Zelda, the series, took off, got huge, blew up, because, I mean, look at the colors, everything goes seamlessly together, the story is so well-paced, everything comes together, um, I'm not a big fan of the dungeons, actually, uh, not all of them, I'm a big fan of the, um, I like the, which one do I like, I hate the water, uh, the water one, when you're Kid Link and Jabba, or Jabba's, or whatever his name is, the big fish. Navi, where art thou? Come hither. You know, that big fish, I hate that. I, I don't hate it. I, I have a strong dislike for it. Oh, Navi the fairy, listen to my words. The words of the Deco Tree. Dost thou sense it? The climate of evil descending upon this realm. Uh, <coughs> and you may be wondering, why am I just playing um, Zelda games? Am I a Zelda fanatic? Not really. These are the only games I have for the... The Game Boy at the not the Game Boy the GameCube at the moment, so so I'm I'm working with what I have here. You know we're we're gonna get Zelda out. We're gonna finish Wind Waker, which I'm just in love with. I'm, fr I'm but you know I, you know you got to take a time to chill out, relax a little bit. I can't be going crazy all the time. Yeah, the boy without the fairy. So you know let me summarize this real quick. Link or Marsh, he doesn't have a fairy. Uh, and he lives in Kokiri Village. The Great Deku Tree is now uh, dying, and Navi has to go see us. Bada bing, there you go. Uh, I love saying bada bing. I say it often. Uh, I think it's Trump who, who who made me start saying it because he's always like that that thing where he's uh, bing bing bong, you know. And then I was like bada bing. It just sounds really good. Oh, and also D respect D dot respect uh, on the D dot podcast. If you if you were a listener of the D dot podcast. Gosh, what's up? Because like that, that it's, a, it's one of the greatest podcasts ever, uh, and it was very, a uh, very underground, like 800 listeners. Check that on you on YouTube, D Dot Podcast, um, or it's called Double D's Podcast, excuse me, but it's the the channel it was uploaded on was D Dot Podcast. It's such a good podcast between uh, Dominic Rabron and D Respect. Uh, Dominic Rabron, he is a Haitian artist. And D respect is a Dominican uh, unemployed at the moment. Well, I don't know if he got a job. Unemployed, uh, or he worked in a what did he work in? Uh, a, a, a nutrition store. Yeah, and he, he he's an avid runner. Anyway, they, they they talk and they go back and forth, and they're both goofy, funny guys. It's a great podcast to listen to. All right, Navi's right waking us up because you know we're a little bit lazy, which is understandable. How can Hyrule's us and you on such a lazy boy? You know what? That that's. A, you're supposed to relate to this character, right? And I do because I'm I'm a little bit lazy, um, or but at the same time, it really fits with like. It gives us a sense of like, okay, yeah, he's the underdog. He's not really the underdog, but he's. It feels good to see someone be good at something, right? Like proteges, like watching LeBron James be effortlessly amazing at what he does is awesome. Even though you know there's hours upon hours upon hours of mastering the the craft. Um, 
this this you know this is how we, we all wish it was right we wake up we just take naps all day right here and then we wake up and we're the hero of time let's go let's get it so i think that's what's really appealing about it uh and that's actually kind of why I like Wind Waker better as a game, because you have more sense of the characters, more sense of, of Link as a character. Um, he's not so boring in that game. He has sass, you know, he, he's not as strong, he's not that powerful. Hi, Marsh! She's a sweetie, you know, she's very kind. I like her. Down. We got those strong legs. Wow, a fairy! Finally, a fairy came to you, Marsh. Wow, that's great news, I'm so happy for you. So, yeah, I mean, it's... What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the the, the, the podcast. You should definitely check that, that box out. It's it's terrific. Go see the Great Deku Tree. I'm on my way. Um, so, let's talk about... I'm going to go ahead and collect the, the rupees before I... Before, before I, um... Before I, uh... What, what was it? Oh, yeah, I can't pick that up yet. All right, can I ever? No, I have to slosh him down. Um, the, uh, the Black Panther movie <coughs> just recently came out, and I am not seeing it, and, uh, I have not seen it, because, not because I'm against it, like, for any, like, reason, right? It's just, I have no interest in superhero, superhero movies in general. My favorite superhero, heroes, are, I like Spider-Man, but he's, like, my Second favorite? I, I don't know who my favorite superhero is. I know Spider-Man's my second or third favorite. I like Iron Man a good deal. It's just he's like, he's too good, you know? He's not too good, but he's... He's really good. Uh, everyone likes Batman. I like Batman. Uh, what else is there? I know there's one that I, I really like. Everyone likes Deadpool because of the movie that came out. That's awesome. Uh, and Deadpool's awesome. Um, but I like Spider-Man because his power isn't that overpowered, right? He... he his power isn't like Superman, where he's just the master of everything. Oh, I have to go see the Great Deku Tree before I do anything. Uh, hey, listen! Every lo-fi hip-hop mix will have that sample in it. Alright, so do I go this way? No, I go the other way. And he's not going to let me through unless I have the proper equipment. Um, so, yeah. I mean, okay, so yeah, Black Panther. So I'm not seeing it because, A, I'm not a fan of, of that kind of movie in general like i i'll have to be like with a a girl who likes superhero movies for me to want to watch a superhero movie or be with friends you know uh and guardians of the galaxy doesn't really count uh the first movie was awesome the second movie was like a seven out of ten it's just my opinion i thought it was okay i thought it was enjoyable it wasn't as good as the first um so yeah black panther let me stay on topic <laughs> black panther it's uh it's it's like this stigma. It's not a stigma. It's like this thing. Oh, jeez. I'm, I'm, I'm... Oh, gosh. I'm not being careful. It's like... Please stop following me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All uh, right. It's like... I don't see... So, my favorite... My favorite uh, show growing up was Teen Titans, right? As a kid. Okay. And my favorite character in Teen Titans was Cyborg. And Cyborg's black. Right? But I never saw it that way. Uh... I, I, I always, like, looked up to Cyborg, and I wanted to be Cyborg. He was always so cool, and he was always so, like, um, keeping the group together, and, and he was always funny and laid back, and he always seemed in control, you know? It never seemed like it was out of his control. Uh, he was also big and strong, you know? And and it's when I when I hear uh, black people, not black people, but the, uh, the black community and white people who advocate for that uh, mindset say that that oh you know it's tough being a black kid and all your superheroes away it's like yeah but when i was a kid I, I wanted to be cyborg and i didn't even care that he was black you know it wasn't like i just wanted because he's just a human being yeah i just saw him as a human being i was like he's just a human being and i just i, I relate to him i you know because all human beings are relatable right in some way or another we all like and we all kind of strive for the same things um you know happiness and security and, uh, you know, there's some outliers there, but in all honesty, like, so the whole thing was like, it's being an important movie, uh, for, did I get the sword? I gotta equip it. It being an important movie for, um, for, for cinema, I suppose it is, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, it shouldn't be, right? We, we should just be like, it's just another human being. It's a cool superhero. We like seeing him on the screen. And if the actor does a good portrayal, then that's even better, right? Um... There's a lot of shitty white uh, superheroes, and is you know, you know, I think you know what I mean. It's like, 
I guess because I'm white, I don't see the importance and I didn't have to grow up. And I guess so if I grew up and all this, all the people on TV were black, um, and I, I wouldn't feel like I relate to them. But that's not the truth. I, I don't. I feel like I would just see them as normal individuals, like just the individuals they are and with flaws and as humans, you know. I don't know. That's just the way I kind of see it. So that whole thing surrounding it, like it's an important movie for cinema and it's not going to get that. It's going to get a good review. Maybe it did get a bad review and I'm being retarded right now. No, I shouldn't use that word, but yeah, I mean, you know, I use it in like the literal sense. Um, you know, maybe I'm being stupid, uh, but I feel like it won't get bad reviews just because of that, that aura surrounding it. Uh, but maybe it will. Maybe it does. Maybe it did. I didn't do my research because, you know, I just kind of sat down and recorded. Uh, but well, maybe it is a good movie. That's another thing. It's like, if, if it is a, that's the thing I'm kind of scared of. It's like, if it's a bad movie... And, uh, it does, it, it gets, um, if it's a bad movie and it gets, uh, good reviews, that's when I know it's like, okay, it's because of that reason. And that would really bother me, but I'm not, I don't care enough to follow it because, you know, I'm not racially, I'm not a racially charged human being. Like, I'm not on the other end of the spectrum and I'm not going to follow it and try to use that as a counter argument, you know? Just as I wouldn't, just as equally as much as I'm not following it by going to watch it because I would like to see it on the other extreme end of the spectrum. So I guess that's me being fair. I guess that's proof of me being fair about it. Uh, me just not giving a damn. I don't need these right now. I should save them. Uh, so yeah. I mean, that's just how I feel about the whole thing. Um, uh, and that's kind of like... That's why when I... When I, when I, when I hear people talk about it, like on, on podcasts and... Basically, yeah, on podcasts, it's kind of the only thing I listen to. Um, it's always kind of like the same thing. Like, people are are saying like, okay, it's an okay movie, it's just another Marvel movie, but you know, it's important for this reason, it's like, but is it really that important? I mean, is it really? Like, I guess, because I'm not black, again, I guess because I'm not black, I don't see it. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, if, if you're black and, and you can explain to me why it's like an important movie and like why growing up and seeing like everyone being white on TV bothered you, not bothered you, but like you couldn't relate to it because of the skin tone thing and everyone being white on TV, like uh, you, you didn't have any heroes because of that. I mean, everyone in sports is black, you know, and like there's a lot of white kids who want to be who want to be them or just as good as them. Right. So I don't know the whole thing with like. Hollywood, it's where like liberals get off on a tangent that's just unnecessary. Like I was watching the Oscars, right? Or I don't know if it was the Academy Awards or the Oscars, but there was a guy and he won, right? And he was black and he was like, this is important because, you know, uh, I'm black and I won. And that that's not what he said, but th that was a part of his, 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 like that was the the summary of his, um, of his, how would I call it? His, uh, congratulations speech or what would you call that like i don't know uh but it, it was kind of like I, I got frustrated because i was like did you do a good job it's not that's not what it's about it's like this isn't about you being black and you winning award and that's important this is about you being a human being and did you did you were you a good actor in that movie it's like he didn't like you, you see people win the award and it's not all black actors that do it but like I've seen black actors go up there and just they, they thank the people that brought them there and they thank the people that um, that pr helped produce it and brought the character to life and they're humble and they appreciate it but like just taking that road of like it's it's be it's uh, it's important because I'm black and we get a black representation it's like don't do that man like you're it's part of the problem it's part of the race problem because you know it's I need a shield um, it's part of the race problem because you know then then. Then you get white people frustrated because they don't understand. They're like, but it's not about that. It's about acting. This isn't about you being black and not having a role. It's about just whether or not you could act. Um, uh, so, I'm, you know, obviously, obviously, by what I'm saying, I'm, I'm not racist. I don't have to say I'm not racist, you know. Um, I think you can tell that I'm not. Uh, but it's just, it's just a big frustration that I have. Um, it's just... It's not a big frustration, but it's just kind of like when, when actors start going off on that thing. Do I have enough money for the shield? Uh, when actors start going off that thing, I'm just kind of like, ugh. Hi, Marsh. Look this way. Look over here with Alan. Talk to me with A. Um, yes, yes. That's how you use a, a fairy. Oh, yeah. I know how to use a fairy. 
Um, so, I guess the race issue, like, so I've had, I've had a, a I, I wouldn't say she was my girlfriend, but, um, she was a very close friend of mine, and I still consider her a close friend, even though she doesn't consider me a close friend, um, and I hope she's well, and I wish her all the best, uh, because I really respected her and valued her as an individual, uh, but she had her own issues, but anyway, it's not that, it's not that important, um, but she, she, she would explain it to me like, you don't understand what it's like to go in a store and be looked at like you're going to rob something when you're when you're just dressed in regular civilian clothes or like being looked at dirtily for just for being black. And it's like, yeah, you, you know what? You're right, because I don't even look for that. Uh, w when I go into a store, I just go in, I buy my shit. I don't give a fuck what people look at me like as sometimes, you know, I, I because I'm, I'm I have like blonde hair and blue eyes. Uh, I go certain places that have a, 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 a large racial population and I, f I don't feel the racism but I feel like the the eyes you know kind of thing uh, like oh what's Whitey doing here but I don't give a damn like just you know if that's that's their problem if they're racist like it's not about race I'm just here to buy some some shoes or I'm here to buy my my fucking spaghetti we all struggling out here man it's a dollar a box can you just give me that uh, that deal 40 rupees what are you running here like a what is he running Sanity over here. Oh, I think there's there's money back there. Um, so I guess that's just how I feel about it. Like I, I feel like it's over. Oh, there we go. I was right about that. It's way overthought. Uh, the whole the race issues that we have here in the U.S. Uh, it's way like overblown on both ends. Like, and if you're on one or the other extreme, you're racist. <laughs> that's just the way it is. It's like. That's how I see it. It's like, if you make it about race, you're racist. Because it's it's about human beings. And once we just kind of accept that, that it's just about human beings, then it's then it's over, right? It's just about differences in understanding culture and the willingness to understand those differences. Um, um, so, I mean, that's about it. And, I mean, there's shitty people on all sides. It's like, well, what about this shitty instance done by this shitty person? What about this shitty instance? It's like, okay, but they're just people doing shitty things. Like, shitty things happen every day, and it's terrible, and we need to work together to stop them. But it's not about making it about race that's going to stop our our kids from being kidnapped off the streets, like, in plain day. And, and not in, of course, not in the U.S., but in other countries. And, you know, that's a big problem is, like, and school shootings, it's not going to solve the issue at all. Uh... But school shootings is not really related, but like, you know, we're, we're not, the more we focus our time, because time is very limited, you only have so much time in the day, on things that don't matter, uh, the more it, it becomes an issue. Because racists are going to be racist, like, I don't, it's not about like screaming about like, you don't understand, it's like, yeah, they're not going to understand, and but they keep diminishing in population um, as the years go by, because people realize it's, it's stupid uh, to be racist, so... Uh, it's just, it's legitimately retarded to be racist, to, to judge someone just by their skin, by their melanin content. It's scientifically retarded. I'm looking for money. I only need one more dollar? Bruh, give me my dollar. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know it's like, again, and, and honestly, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest with you, I feel more comfortable, okay, in a, in a, and I, and I know this is going to sound racist, and it kind of is, but I, I feel more comfortable in a bus full of black people than I do in a bus uh, full of white people. Um, and Because I, I ride the bus, right? And if the bus is full of black people, because I, I don't know, there's just that cultural thing of like just respect your own business and respect your own shit. Um, whereas white people are just crazy. Not in general, right? There's crazy black people too, right? Um, but, but there's just this, in, this in, innate insanity that goes on within, I have enough money. Where, like, you'll get a dude that comes on and he thinks he's the cock of the fucking walk. And it's always a white dude, right? It's always white people being the cock of the walk. And, and like, it's a very small minority uh, of black people that, that really do that, I feel like. Um, but maybe that's just my experience, right? Of where I've lived and where I've grown up and what I've been sh experienced to. But that's just my experience. Okay, I'm gonna buy this. Um... And that plays into it too, right? So, like, if you're, if you're, like, so some people might feel the same exact way that I do, but just flip the scripts with Hispanic, black, or just white, or Asian, you know, flip the script, flip the script because of, of the environment and what's going on culturally in that area, or what's being valued in those cultures or, or those communities. Um, so, 
so right so like in so that's like my racial thing but it's not a racial thing really it's just kind of like what my community is i guess i would say like where i live currently uh that's just how things pan out all right yeah i know you're an asshole and you're gonna not you but like this dude mr no fairy calling me mr no fairy us um what was i thinking about uh so it's so when you get to that point it's like it's not a racial thing it's just like there's just some communities that are just a certain way and they value certain things and they are exposed to one another constantly right that's their environment so that's what's valued and that's what's pushed uh so it's not a racial thing it's just kind of a what's going on it's something uh it's really interesting to talk about but i feel like the answer is simple and i feel like the biggest problem is the word nigga you know I'm, i know it's like you're not supposed to say the n-word if you're white but it's kind of i don't you know i don't because it's not me if that makes any sense so i'll talk about that um and i and like this i sound like eric andre's uh little edit that he's like this isn't your mama's dial or your, your daddy's uh, cabinet or whatever he says uh but because i'm saying it you know but i'm just trying to say like i'm not afraid to talk about this um what oh i don't i have to equip the shield god oh so yes um what was i talking about uh shit i was talking about uh, shield the n-word right i was talking about the n-word right so i don't say the n-word ever because that's not my environment that's not where i grew up i had black friends growing up but i didn't call them my nigga because you know that just wasn't me even if they said like yeah you can call me that dude you cool you know you can call me that why do i have to take on that voice well that was one of my friends voice you know but um you know but you know they would be like yeah you're you, you know you can call me that but i still wouldn't because that's not me i wasn't raised around that it, it didn't sound like i did it once and i was like oh that's not something i do because that's just not who I am. Like, I, you know what? I'll, I'll use the word if it's like, if it's like such an extreme situation where it contextually makes sense. Like, Nick, <laughs> but I'll like cut it off short, you know, because it's like, are you really being that dumb right now? Um, but that's because like I grew up uh, and that was kind of acceptable to, to kind of cut it short in the middle. So I would use it a lot. Right. Um, so I don't understand why white, Hispanic, uh, or black people, or I guess black people can say it, right? But I don't understand why, like, white people want to say the N-word. It's like, it's it's not that it's not your word, it's just, it's not you. And if you were raised in a black neighborhood and you grew up saying it, then you should just say it. Um, and I think black people will know when it's coming natural from you, right? Like, I think most people can tell when people are being fake. So if you're a black person, like, if I was black and a white dude came up to me and he's like, Hey, what's up, my nigga? But, like, it came out naturally and I could tell, like, that's where he was from. Like, he was from the Flatbush, or one of those, uh... Not, I guess not, like, all those neighborhoods. They It's not about the neighborhood thing, but, um... Uh, you know, like, I could tell that it was part of his vernacular. It was part of something that he grew up with, and I was a black dude. I'd be like, oh, okay, so that makes sense. You know, he's coming up to me as in an amicable way, and he grew up saying this. Like, this isn't something he's forcing to try to seem cool, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, and making it like, oh, that's our word, that's, like, completely, insanely racist. Um, but I think that's evident, right? Like, I don't need to say that. I think everyone knows that, 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 that's just racist in its nature. Uh, saying like, oh, this word is our word. It's kind of like, uh, um, and of course, like ER, of course you should, you should never say that ever. Um, just because of like, that's like, uh, I don't know what they call Jews in the Holocaust, but you know, you wouldn't say that to a Jewish guy, you know, it's the same kind of shit not like same because the holocaust is it's i guess comparing really bad things is bad to do because it's like oh one's worse like they're not worse they're both terrible but like the holocaust was fucking like an atrocity in the the past six thousand years of civilization right uh but still they're both terrible instances and you wouldn't do that so that's that's the kind of thing that i see with the n-word i think like most of the racial tension nowadays comes from the n-word it's like why people are like well i want to say it it's cool it's like but that's not you and if it is you, then just say it. Just own it. And I think most people would be able to tell that y you're being you. It's like, well, yeah, you won't say that around a black guy in the hood. It's like, well, if that's who you are, then you should just be able to. Like, you shouldn't feel uncomfortable doing that if that's who you are. And if you get jumped for it, then just ex try to explain to them in a humanly manner. Like, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm just, I was just raised around that. That was my community. 
And if they don't appreciate that and they tell you like, hey, well, don't do it to us, then it's like, oh, okay, then I won't. Uh, because maybe they take offense to that. Um, but then if you if you say, oh, I take offense to that, but then you say it to someone else, you're being a hypocrite. That's just the nature of things. I look at things really like definitively and logically. Like if, if, if you tell someone, don't call me that, or I guess I shouldn't take that to racist for me to be like, don't call me that. But if you tell someone like, don't call me that, and uh, does thou have the courage to undertake this task? Absolutely. If you tell someone, uh, don't call me that, but then you turn around and you go, hey, what's up, my nigga? What's up? What's good? And then it's like, oh, but, uh, excuse me, like, why can't I? Oh, that's not your word, man. That's not, I don't, I don't appreciate it coming from you, but from him, like, that's my brotherly thing. And it's like, okay, you should respect that, but they're being a hypocrite. And that's an issue with them. You're not going to solve their issues. Um, you should just respect that. Maybe they, you know, some people have, humans are fickle, right? So maybe like some people are afraid of fucking, I don't know. What, what are some people afraid of like uh, trees, right? Like, or, or some people are afraid of certain things because of, 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 of um, instances of their past or, or like basements because of like they had a fear as a kid. Um, you should just respect that fear because maybe that's just something that's ingrained into them uh, from maybe that person was exposed to extreme racism. Uh, and they cope with it by, you know, using it for empowerment between him and another uh, black person. Between two black people, right? And maybe it was like um, a terrible thing that happened to him in his past. Like some people get like raped and then they can't... Anything associated with that traumatic experience makes them uh, anxious or nervous. Um, which is really shitty. Uh, but, you know, you should just respect that fear, or respect that uncomfortability that may come from that. So, like, you shouldn't continuously expose them to that. That's just you being a fucking asshole. Uh, right? Yeah. So, obviously, always respect people like that. But, at the same time, just realize that if you are that person, you're, 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 uh, you're being a hypocrite if you, if you do that. Just in definition, just in nature. And it's not more complicated than that. If you make it more complicated than that, then nothing will ever be solved. Uh, but I'm sure there's some people who disagree with me, right? Like, this may be a really polarizing issue to talk about, and people are gonna, like, I don't really have that many subscribers, but people who may be subscribers will unsubscribe and all that, and it's like, okay, you know. Um, but you're, you know I'm not racist. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just not, so. I mean, that's just my opinion on the, the matter. Wow, I'm gonna die this early? Okay, so I should probably start paying attention a little bit more, because I'm in the first dungeon. Uh, I did the first part like it was my fucking job, like I'd done it a million times. Oh shit, I forgot that the mechanics are, are different than they are in, uh, Wind Waker, because I'm used to playing Wind Waker. Hey! I'm not gonna listen to you, Navi, I know what to do, I gotta throw the thing down the, the well. Or I gotta jump down the well. So, yeah, I guess that's that's the race issue for me. Uh, maybe I'll change my mind. You know, one day maybe I'll change my mind. Um, and it's possible that a cop, you know, you leave a comment and you're, you're, you know, you're respectful with your comment and you word your argument um, that makes, you know, makes sense. Look at this wall, the vine's growing on it. I know, Navi, stop. Uh, I'm gonna, oh, right, this is a trap, right? No, that's a master quest. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe people will be like, oh, well, I was, going to, I was going to subscribe, but, you know, now that you feel this way, it's like, ah, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of, um, that's kind of a, a shitty thing to do in general. Like, if you disagree with, like, if you don't find entertainment from someone's content, then yeah, like, unsubscribe, don't watch them anymore. But if, if someone says something polarizing and you don't agree with them and you're like, I'm just, I'm, I'm barring you for life, it's kind of like, so everything that you disagree with, you just shut it out. That's, that's not, you're part of the problem. And um, we don't want you here anyway, so. You know, you should be open to discussion, and you should at least make an attempt to discuss. Like, even if you, like, okay, I understand, like, not finding someone enjoyable, but. Okay, how do I get out of the Z-targeting, because it's really bothering me. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go get the slingshot. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, um. Kid Link. Uh, the, the whole, I don't think the game really picks up for me until... I feel like this is all work, right? And then when I get to be adult Link, that's when things get like really fun. Just my opinion. Hey, I remember how to do this. Come on, bitch. Let's go. You saw that backflip? Link, uh, Marsh is ready. Marsh is really ready. 
Um, I really want to go to a. I really want to go work on a farm. Uh, but it's not really. Uh, it's not really a, a really high paying job, so I probably won't do that. But I. I feel like at some point in my life I'll probably do it. Uh, so I'm probably not going to be doing less plays on my channel for very long. So while I have the opportunity, I, I will do it. Uh, and then when I get the opportunity again and I'm settled in in another apartment, I will definitely start again. So, you know, like my, my channel will go through uh, phases of uh, of um, of content. So like I'll probably do a lot more vlogs when I'm moving around a lot because soon I will be doing a lot of moving. So there'll be more vlog stuff, right? And then when I get... Um, but I always keep like the One Piece reviews or the reactions always on here. I always try to do them or talk about One Piece just because I love One Piece. Uh, but the, the Let's Play stuff is kind of, you got to set up, man. You got to get the, the microphone out. You got to get the Quables out. You got to get the GameCube out. You got to get the software open. It's a lot of, it's not a lot of work, but it's not as simple as just sitting down and talking about something. Uh, so yeah. Ooh. I like how it's the same kind of game as Wind Waker. Not the same kind of game, but the same kind of controls, right? So I do that. I look around with this. I the, the L targeting. Ooh, there's a little thing there that I wouldn't have seen. So, I mean, yeah. So if you disagree with me about what I just talked about, like, let me know, of course. And, you know, and maybe I'll agree with you, right? Like, that's the thing. It's... It, I, if you if you leave a if you say hey fuck you man you don't get it like of course I'm not gonna get it if you're angry in your tone and you're you're completely um, immobilized by your passion um, but try to calm down and word yourself so that people will understand you when you give them an argument because being angry does not does not help 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 people to agree with you I found in my life that if you're just calm and patient people listen to you and even when people are angry right and you're dealing with them. And they're, they're completely like, uh, did I get the slingshot? So I should probably use it. Um, if people are really uh, angry um, and you're calm and you're explaining things to them, like they hear you. Like, don't worry. Oh, yeah, I shoot this. This 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 had me stuck for a little bit, I remember. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's just the way it'd be. I love, you know how, so, like, in Wind Waker, it looks like I know what I'm doing sometimes, when sometimes it's obvious that I don't. Uh, this is what it looks like when I know what I'm doing with a video game. Uh, I'm kind of able to just fly by. I feel like I'm just fucking killing this game right now. But it is the first dungeon, like, uh, I haven't played the, the later dungeons in a very, very long time, like, years. So, recently I beat a few of the dungeons. Um... Like six months ago, this game, I was playing it when I bought the GameCube, because uh, I just felt like playing this game, and I had some money. Uh, and I got up to, like, the the Temple of the Forest, right? Or the Sacred Forest, and then I just fucking, I just, I stopped playing. Uh, base, mainly because um, I would get really drunk, and I would play Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is fucking fun. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I wanted to do other stuff. Uh, and... I don't remember what I traded it off for. Um, I do not remember. All right, cool. Uh, so we're here, and I hear that. Oh yeah, this guy's gonna drop down. I gotta fight him. Man, you know this feels really good to just be like running through this. It feels like I've I've, I've grown as a as a video game player. I would probably be a very good video game player if I would have. Um, concentrated on it but like you should you, you probably don't want to be a video game player as far as like career wise goes like maybe you do and like more respect to you um but um or more power to you i guess i should say but at the same time it's like fuck video game video gamers get fucked up man they get wrist problems you know they they don't have very stable jobs they don't have stable lifestyles not very healthy to play a lot of video games um i play video games all day um, but I also was talking at the same time, you know, trying to practice my, um, oration capabilities, I guess I would say, speech. Uh, and that's been really fun. Because uh, I like to talk a lot, but I don't get many opportunities to talk in my job. So, so I try to, I, I, and lately I've actually, I've, I've been so, not lonely, I, I, but it's kind of like I've been, I, I, I spend all of my time alone, right? Um, but lately I've had no one to talk to for so long that it's gotten to the point where like, I'll just talk to myself. And it's not crazy to talk to your spouses, especially if you use it as, okay, that's how I, oh, I did that for no reason. Um, especially if you do it for, um, 
stress relief, right? So, I think I need to bring that fire over here, right? That's what I need to do? No. I thought that's what I needed to do. Uh, so, yeah, if you talk to yourself for stress relief, like, don't feel bad about that at all. I, I used to talk to myself when I was a kid. I stopped from, like, 12 or age 13 to... I'd say 14. Age 14 to... Actually, I really didn't need that. I, I should, probably shouldn't have used it. From, oh, are you kidding me? So from age 14 to uh, 20 now, I did not talk to myself ever. I stopped. I got out of the habit of it. Uh, but now lately, I've been so stressed out that I, I, I talk to myself. But like, it really helps out a lot, if I'm being completely honest with you. All right, let's fight this guy. Uh, and the slingshot is like the best weapon in the game. Uh, not the best weapon in the game. I think that I like the hook grappling. I like the bow and arrow a lot. But the slingshot early on is like a godsend because you don't have to fucking get up close with anyone. Uh, just need to find ammo. All right, so do I want to go over there? Ah, uh, stop falling off. Um, and I think you know what? I guess I that that whole race thing that I was going on about. I think most people agree. I think that. Like, most white, black, it doesn't matter. Ooh, a gold school toilet. I need these. So most, like, white and black people probably agree with me on that issue. Um, I think most people agree. It's just that the outliers are always the loudest, right? Like, people in the outliers are just screaming their heads off. Uh, racist um, Hispanics and whites and then racist blacks uh, just screaming at each other. And so, and then usually, like... The people closer to the outliers take a side and then they're really loud. Um, so then it gets like, so then you get like diet racists, right? On both sides, like on the liberal side, I think they, they more, and it's not a liberal conservative thing, but I feel like, um, liberals tend to be more like Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. It's kind of more associated with that. And they, they seem to take that side. And then of course the other side, the conservatives take for the white. Um, but they're really on the outliers. Like most people in the middle, like the majority of the population of the United States, uh, and Canada, well, Canada is kind of really liberal, but it depends. Um, you, you you get people who are not as vocal, but just kind of understand. Um, so, yeah. But it's very hard. Uh, actually, I'm going to tell a really embarrassing story. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, Navi, like, are you, are you okay? Do we need to call an ambulance? Because that was kind of a lot of haze. Um, I'm going to tell kind of an embarrassing story. One time, I, I, I had a friend... He was the boyfriend of my, a good friend of mine, and he was like 24, I think. Uh, and I was 18, and we would hang out, like me, him, her, and like um, another friend of mine, and you know, depending, varying, it would depend. Uh, but me and him, I liked him a lot. He was intelligent. Um, he was a little bit crazy, right? He would lose his emo, like that, from what I heard. But with me, he was always very calm and always very understanding and always very like cool around me. Um, and so, like, I liked him a lot. Like, everyone, like, not everyone, but people were like, yeah, he's kind of crazy. He does crazy things. But I was like, I don't see it. You know, he's super nice to me. He comes to my house. He's very respectful. Um, he's always he's always very respectful to me and, and my time and my space. And uh, one time, uh, we were all sitting in silence, and I went, you know what I hate? Racism. And it just felt so forced. Like, I, I wanted him to like me, you know, kind of thing, because I was a little bit younger, and I... I, I just, I, I, I never, it'd been a long time since I hung out with a black person. So I was like, I want to break this barrier and I want him to know I'm not racist. And so that was a problem I used to have is like, I wanted black people to know that, hey, I'm not racist, right? You know, like I'm not racist, but I think it just shows when you're not. Um, so that was kind of like super embarrassing in hindsight. But after that, I think he understood because he was older and he understood what, what, what my intentions were. Uh, and he was super cool, and I and I hope he's doing fine. I hope he's doing all right out there. He was he was really kind and really nice. Um, not to everyone, apparently, from from what I heard, but to me, absolutely. So I wish him all the best, uh, and I wish everyone all the best. You know, uh, you know, not you know, not rapists, and murderers, but and but you, you get it. Like I think we all understand. So I'm supposed to jump down, right? I'm supposed to jump down with a fire, maybe. Is there fire nearby? Because I tried to jump and it kind of wobbled. Can I make it? Yeah. Oh, fuck. All right, cool. So we're going to step on this. No, not on this. Oh, yeah. So we're going to... Excuse me. So we're going to step on this. I don't think this is how you do it. I remember in Master Quest, you have to, like, 
throw something down, or you have to bring fire with you. So I'm going to put this away. How do I put it away? Put away. All right, cool. We're going to take this. Bada bang. Oh, but we're not going to be able to jump because of the Skultola. I'm just going to try to jump again. It's supposed to work. Oh, don't come down. Don't come down. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, we're just going to have to jump again. Look, I know, Navi. I see. It's a giant spider monster with a face. It's not hard to see that. Um, so, as far as media goes, like, things I can talk about, I haven't watched many... Ooh! I haven't watched many movies or any shows or... Alright, I'm just gonna let it fly. Oh, there we go! Come on now, I know what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, as far as, like, media goes, I haven't watched many things uh, lately. I just kind of watch... Like, every day I get home from work, I watch Super Mega Upload, because I love Let's Plays. Why do you think I'm making them? I, I genuinely enjoy them. Um, and then I watch the Game Grumps Uploads, because, yeah, I like them. Um, I don't feel like I have to justify why I watch them. I just enjoy them, genuinely. Uh, I think they're... Sometimes they phone it in a little bit, and sometimes they have, like, um... Like, you, I can tell because... I don't think because of my age, but because of, like, of how much I've listened to them over the years, or over the past year that um that uh what was i saying that um like when they have uh conflict not conflict but like when they're not enjoying each other's company but when you do five years a show with someone you gotta like come on um and then you know i, I will watch that's about it like i'll get home i'll make myself dinner i'll watch those uploads and then i'll think of stuff i want to upload or i can't get over there from there so how do i do this again um or think about things I want to film, or for the future, and right now I'm trying to, like, making plans of, like, plans of action, of what I want to do, uh, with my life, because I'm in a place of, like, uncertainty, and every decision I make will count, so if I remember correctly, like, there's a way to get over there, uh, there's a Skultola over there, so, oh, there we go, I'm so dumb, um, so, by the way, the Master Quest is, like, so hard it's not even fun. Like, you can't even figure the puzzles out. They're so fucking ridiculously hard. I've, I've, I've been playing the Master Quest, and I've gotten pretty far. Um, but gosh, it is not fun. Um, so... What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, media. So, like, I'm not really watching a lot of stuff. Oh, wait, first I want to do this. Um, so there's not really much I can talk about there. Um... At work the other day, though, I saw a, I saw, a, I saw, so, a guy, I want to jump over there, right, right, yes, a guy, he came over with, uh, well, he came for lunch, oh, fuck you, oh, what are you doing, he, he came for lunch, and, um, on his way out, he saw one of his co-workers, he was like, oh, I didn't see you there, he's like, yeah, I'm here having lunch, I just got here, he's like, oh, well, How's the wife doing? And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. This is a real conversation between he two human beings. Because you hear about stuff like that, right? Like, how's the wife and the kids and the blah, 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 blah. You know, you hear about that kind of stuff, but you don't think it's real. Um, or I, I guess I shouldn't say you don't think it's real. But uh, you, you, it's like a stereotype, right? But it was like the most stereotypical conversation any human being could possibly have. Uh, please forgive me, Master. I'll never do it again. If you spare me, I'll teach you something cool. You will never beat my brothers up ahead unless you punish them in the proper order. Please read faster. Two, three, one. Gotcha. Do you think I'm a traitor? Uh, yes. You are a coward. You should have gone down and dying and screaming. for. But I guess when you're like on the side of evil, it's harder to be like what we're doing is right we're murdering this great beautiful big tree let me let me honor what we're doing right i think you innately know like what you're doing is wrong uh, in this situation so it's fine uh, but it was yeah it was the most stereotypical conversation i'd ever heard any individual ever have ever with another um like stereotypical white businessman i hate this dungeon this part of the dungeon um it was like uh so yeah, I, I told her. She she called me up before I came down here, and uh, she told me, uh, uh, what did he say? He was like, uh, she asked me what I was having for 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 lunch. I told her I was having a salad so I can be more hungry for dinner. You know, he's a big fat guy, and they they both started laughing, and they're like, ha, 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 ha,
You know, this is really happening right now. This is this is real. And I, I thought it was so amazing for that sheer fact. All right, jump, boom. All right, we're here. Uh, and it's amazing because it's rare that you get to see those kind of interactions. And, like, they're the kind of interactions that if you're, like, super... I wouldn't say baked, but, like, if you're on... Not on... I guess, yeah, if, like, you're super baked, if you smoke the pot... Uh, it's something like you would look at your friends or and just burst out laughing because it's like did that really just happen? All right, I'm gonna jump. Okay, I could have jumped the whole time um, And uh, So yeah, I mean, I know it's not like an amazing observation, but it's one of those things where it's like uh, Like what the fuck? <laughs> like is that real? Did they really just I'm like all right, we'll see you at the office and he was like, yeah, I'll see you there so <laughs> I mean come on now like what what is was that real but it was and it was only one of the only so I guess that's where that 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 shtick comes from from real life. Um, pay attention to what the I action icon says. So let's talk about the Louis C.K. things. Let me just polarize my entire audience. Um, so right, he jerked off in front of he jerked off in front of girls without their consent, and yet it said that he asked them. So here's the thing. It's like so I so. I'm gonna say I don't know this to be for for facts, right? Uh, for certain, but I heard that like he did ask them for consent, like, "Hey, can I jerk off in front of you?" But like the story is kind of unsure; it's unclear. Um, but the way he responds makes me feel like he did ask, right? Like you're an adult human being and you know what you're getting into. Um, and I guess that's really super polarizing for me to say. Uh, obviously, I don't. I don't think you should be that sexually um, uh, driven, or not driven, but like that sexually uh, contained, I guess I would say, to the point where you need to jerk off in front of women. Um, like I see beautiful women all the time. Uh, I see beautiful women that find me beautiful, or I find them beautiful, they find me beautiful. You know, that kind of like, you know, when, okay, so you're a person, uh, and if you're, uh, you know, when you see someone and you find them attractive and they find you attractive, you guys, you know, you guys, there's that, like, um, that, that the psychological thing starts happening, you know, like, okay, you guys make eye contact sometimes, or you look at each other, or like you say little things or little flirtatious remarks, right? That happens all the time in life. Um, and I've had that happen to me, and you've probably had that happen to you. Everyone has that happen to them, right? So, right. So, y y sh but I don't have the urge to, to take out my dick and start jerking off in front of them. Um, so, I definitely think it's a power thing, and that's where it's kind of like, or maybe it's like a submissive thing. Um, like, oh my gosh, I can't contain myself, So I, I and you're watching me be this dirty, disgusting creature. Um, so, I don't, I guess that's what it is. Um, and he gets off on that humiliation. He's probably like a cuckold. Probably not. I don't know. Holy shit. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the, what the thing is, right? But like, in general, if you ask someone permission, if it, like, you know, when you don't want someone to jerk off in front of you, someone says, can I jerk off in front of you? You, I know girls who would go absolutely fucking not. Are you kidding me? Um, so, and, and the way it's being painted out is like, they were like, um, uh, they said, ye they said yes, but they, they really meant no, or like, they, because of the situation and that they're such in a position of power, they have a certain responsibility to uphold, and, okay, so, if I'm wrong about this whole story, because I could have it all backwards, um, please let me know in the comments, because I would love to know the actualities of what actually happened here in this story, and maybe I'm being a moron, but if that is the story, like, he asked permission, they said yes, and there should be absolutely no issue, there should be no fucking problem, like, why... Why does he need to apologize if if you are two adult human beings? You, there is a there is a a question of consent. Now there needs to be like a question of like, am I in the power to be asking these questions, or am I in the power to do something like this? Like, no, you're a sick fuck. You're not a sick fuck, but like you're a you're a person with a very strange fetish, um, and you have some some kind of issue that you can't keep yourself sexually contained uh, in, in 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 certain situations. Um, but like. And that shouldn't trans trans uh, translate into actual life, right? You should keep that hidden. You have issues with controlling that. Okay, I understand. Like that's fucked up beyond measure. But as far as it being like rape, like no, come on, come on now. Like it's not as bad as like the other shit we were hearing out of Hollywood, where it was like actual, like physical, like non-consensual, serious rape, or like serious fucking crazy shit that was going on. So, 
Um, that whole scandalous, that whole scandal thing was like getting way too out of hand. Um, so I don't know. Nah, that's just me. Um, and you know, you can paint me as a misogynist all you want. Like I don't, I don't give a damn. I don't give a fuck. That's the thing. Like you'll never get over me is like, because no matter what you say, people are. People are gonna watch the content of where it comes from nowadays. I think most people are, are done with the clickbaiting shit. And I think more people are getting more in tune with like checking the content and the context. Um, and I am being, I am saying like right now, like I don't know all the whole story. And um, be, that being the case, like I'm, I'm open to knowing the whole story. If you know it, leave it in the comments. And then maybe my opinion will stay the same. Maybe my opinion will probably, if it is considered like it legitimately like non-consensual rape, well I guess that's what rape, rape is, non-consensual sex, then obviously it's fucking sick and that's not okay. Uh, but like that whole thing of like, oh he's in a position of power and he shouldn't be able to, like come on, you're an adult human being, if you don't want someone to jerk off in front of you, you just say no. Um, you're right, I, I, that's the way that I saw the story and that's what I read, but of course I could be completely wrong, as I've said before, don't fucking witch hunt me, like just correct me. And I'll be I'll be happy to admit him in part two to be like okay, or whenever whatever part it is that I see the comment in, I'm like okay I was fucking wrong. So I put that down there, and I forget what what purpose that serves, putting that down there. Um, so I'm just gonna go down the hole. Oh, I have to go get the flame from the other side. Ah, that's right. I'm fucking blowing through this, man. We're just having a, a grand old time. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's my take on it. Uh, swipe. Mm. So, I am not... I, I actually, like, now that I'm replaying this, I'm like, I'm actually fucking good at this dungeon. I like this dungeon now, but I guess it's because it's easy, right? You like things when they're easy. Or, not you, but, like, people like things when they're easy. Two, three, one. Gotta keep moving. But I also gotta make sure he can hit me. Dodge. I'll move. Ah, oh, shit. Hit him. Come on. Fuck me. Uh. Yeah, see, they're gonna hit me if I don't dodge, Navi. I know watch out. I'm trying to watch out. Okay, two. Alright, now it's really easy. Bada bing. Alright, and then one. And that's it. So, they're frozen now. I should be able to talk to one of them, right? Oh shit, they restart because I didn't go get the last one. Fuck me, right? That's what's happening? Oh no, he's running around. Oh shit, I gotta catch him. Fuck! Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I just have to get him. Okay, I just have to get him. Um, oh, that was my first, like, legitimate mess up. And I'm not, like, trying to say, like, I'm good at video games or anything. Because I'm, I'm obviously, like, I'm, I'm average. I'm an average player. Um, in order to administer the coup de grace, I have to remember, I forgot how to do this. Uh, strike with your sword while she's stunned. Uh, sorry about that. So, yeah, oh, yeah, I shoot the eggs, and then I attack the eye. And I need to get some ammo for my shit, and I'm gonna get some hearts. Um, so, I, I guess, I guess I'll, t I'll, guess I'll try to, like, plug some stuff. Like, I've been listening to the same album for the past two weeks now, um, because, mainly because I'm too lazy to download another album. Um, and I used to be, like, super way into music. I'm just waiting for that new Death Grips album, if I'm being completely honest with you, because I need my Death Grips. You know, I got tired, I, I go through phases where I, like, consistently listen to Death Grips on non-stop. Uh, because I fucking love Death Grips, and if you, if you, okay, so, talking about Death Grips, uh, if you don't like Death Grips the first time you listen to, I understand, okay, like, no one likes Death Grips the first time they hear Death Grips, I, I listened to The Money Store, and I fucking hated it, I listened to The Money Store, and I was like, no, I want to understand why people like this shit, right, I gotta find her, I was like, I want to understand why people, uh, like Death Grips, so I listened to The Money Store, at least seven times on repeat uh, until I found the song that like rustled my jimmies right so it was hustle bones because it's the most like rhythmically sound song so how do I do this again uh, and then I strike yeah um, so yeah she would soup like so it's hustle bones 
Uh, give a fuck with your heart, yeah, fuck with your heart for this real shit. Get your whole click to the curb, what, what? That shit is fire, okay? I don't give a fuck what anyone says. That shit is one of the greatest songs ever. Um, and beware, holy fuck, beware. He came to me with money in his hand, I didn't ask him, right? Okay, so if you don't, if you're not a, familiar with those songs, you should definitely check out See, that's the thing, it's like, if you look up Death Grips on YouTube, it's always Guillotine, the first song that comes out. And De Guillotine's an okay song, it's not my favorite Death Grip song, it's not even top 10 favorite Death Grip song. Beware, Hustle Bones, those fucking songs, you gotta listen to them. Um, and, uh, did I just fucking beat? Okay, wow, okay, like, alright, that was, uh, you can give a little round of applause. Um, it was the power of Death Grips, you saw that, it was the power of Death Grips! So yeah, I, and then I started listening to the Money Store more. I had to listen to it for like, so seven times in a row for, in the, for the course of three days. And then I realized like, holy shit, this is the greatest music to ever be composed by any human being ever. And I honestly think they're the greatest band of all time. That's my opinion, like my honest, legit opinion. Um, but you kind of have to be um, initiated into liking the music. Uh, and, and that's really with any style of music, like, right? Like, so when I first started listening to metal, I was like, this is noise, this is trash, I don't like it. But then I was like, no, no, no. Try different stuff, listen to a lot of it, and then all of a sudden, the, the beat starts to make sense. It makes those neural passageways, and like, the you start to see what the attraction of the rhythm is, and what the attraction of the melody is, and you start to develop that palette, that taste for that music. What did he just say? Fuck. Um, oh yeah, if I say yes or no, he says the same thing. So, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, death... Oh, fuck. So yeah, you gotta listen to the money store a couple times through. And then afterwards, you gotta listen to, um... Um... Uh, you gotta listen to, uh... Uh... The... Ex-Military. Like, Bottomless Pit, I don't even consider it a re-listenable album. So, Bottomless Pit, the recent album, I listened to it the first time. I fucking hated it when it dropped. I hated the shit out of it. I was like, oh my gosh, guys, what did, what happened? What happened to the rhythm? What happened to the to the to the splashing electricity, the the torture, the pain, the paranoia, the the power, the powers that be. You know what happened to that? And then I realized a year later, I re-listened to it and I was like, oh yeah, this is some crazy um, especially if you get super stoned and you read the lyrics to um, Hothead while listening to it, you realize that holy shit, it's about like like seriously injuring someone and, and taking away their freedoms and it's, it sounds like the, the writings of a serial killer is very dark uh, but that's why they called it shallow listening because it's like that's what it is um it's 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 like very surface level very surface level listening <laughs> it's like uh this, we're painting a picture here's the situation here are the words that go along with that situation here's the the fucking dope ass music that goes with it that we produce zach hill flatlander come on now so, so yeah, I'm not paying attention to this because, like, you know, it's it's fucking it's the three people of the Triforce, the Din and the 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 the, the Nehru and uh, I don't remember I don't remember the last one. Give me the last one so I can I don't seem stupid. I should be paying attention to this, but like I blew through the dungeon so well that like <laughs> I don't even care. I do care, of course. And Feyre, Din, Nehru, Feyre. So. Yeah, you gotta listen to the good stuff, and then, like, slowly build your way. So, like, after I found the Money Store good, I listened to it for four months straight. I'm um, not the only thing I would listen to, but, like, I would always have it there, like, oh, I need my death grips. But then I would try to listen to, like, Niggas on the Moon when it first dropped, and I was like, oh, this is trash. But now Niggas on the Moon is my favorite album from Death Grips. So, like, at first, their music is really abrasive, and it's really hard to listen to, so, like, you don't get it. But then after a few listens, you're like, oh, wait a second. Hold, stop, stop everything. Everything needs to stop. This is the greatest music ever made. Um, and it's such a weird thing. I have envy for people getting into Death Grips because like those first three days of not getting it, I envy that because you're like, I want to get it. And then it doesn't happen like you force yourself like a hipster drinking black coffee, even if it's shitty coffee. It doesn't happen like you force yourself. It happens like like just like that like snap of the fingers the song is all of a sudden good the last listen it wasn't good so like i listened to hustle bone maybe six times and then on the seventh listen i was like wait a second this is amazing and then and then it all makes sense right uh so that's what that's what the the death grips is and that's why death grips will never be popular because no one wants to take the time to do that unless they're super into music but uh recently i've been listening to p sus's temporary sensation and i talked about that on my diet son too 
um, video. It's fucking good. It's fucking good. After two weeks, I've finally gotten tired of it. Uh, but pull out sus, peace sus. Uh, if you don't know about him, he makes the most positive music you could ever imagine. It's it's the embodiment of positivity. It is sincerely the thing that will make you feel the most positive you've ever felt. Like Pogo, if you know Pogo, you've probably heard his mixes like Alice on um on YouTube. They have a lot of views, so I'm assuming excuse me, assuming, but if you haven't, like they're very similar styles, but Pisas has more of a a rustic kind of he has more voice and he has more uh, more things he can do with the sound. And he switches it up a lot, like uh, Inner Moonlight, um, Temporary Sensation, School Days, and School Days. Those three albums from P. Sus are the best. They are amazing. And he has a lot of music, and a lot of it's not good, but those three albums are all solidly good start to finish. So, and those int those artists are kind of interesting, right? Like people who are able to make music that's super fucking good start to finish. I always found that to be like, and then, and then like they drop singles and shit and it's like, oh, this isn't very good. Um, so that's, that's kind of, that's interesting. Like that's interesting. Some musicians are like that. Well, some musicians are like, their singles are good, but their albums are trash. Yes, we know we are Marsh. We are the, the greatest hero of all time. Um, we just fucking destroyed the great Deku temple. Like I wasn't even, I was barely looking at the screen half the time. Um, fuck me, man. Damn. <laughs> oh no, the great Teku tree's dying. Oh gosh, that's really sad. That's really sad. Okay, well, let's go to Hyrule Castle, Marsh. All right, cool. Let's go. Uh, goodbye, great Deku tree. Very sad stuff. So that's it for episode one. Well, I guess I'll, I'll I'll wait a second to close it out. I'll I'll leave the I'll get the ocarina and then we'll we'll call it episode one. We'll get to Hyrule. We'll we'll finish talking to the owl. Because honestly, oh my gosh, I hate this guy. Um, yeah, I know it's all my fault. I'm, I'm very apologetic for that. Um, uh, it's all our fault that he was dying, rotting from the inside out. It's all our fault, right? Typical. Typical uh, Kokiris. Um, <laughs> that's not very typical of them, actually. There, there's actually some very nice Kokiris. I know there's some money in here. Uh, I'll go get it. I'll go get it before we leave. Um, I went on a tangent about Death Grips there for a second. You, you know what? If if you ever meet me in person, don't ever mention Death Grips because I will talk about it for too long. Like, I love Death Grips to a point where it's, uh... Because I, I, have, I have all the reasons why you should listen to it. Uh, except for, like, the fact that it's very negative and very, um... But some of it's very empowering. Like, um... Okay, you're just gonna let me steal all that money? Okay, and you just let me steal these hearts? Alright, cool, man. Uh, thank you, thank you. This one has a heart in it too, right? I guess I should have saved it. Oh no, it has money. Great. Um, uh, but yeah, what was it talking about? Oh yeah, music. Um, I guess I touched on that, like, because I will talk about Death Grips too, and I, all the reasons. I, so if you over pollute your um, mind with Death Grips, like it's so negative that it kind of gets to you. But like, ex-military just gets you pumped. It gets you going. You feel the energy, boy, and you just you should watch that video. Uh, look up the first time you listen to Death Grips, uh, and it's a the dude running across the bridge. It is, it is, it makes me, it makes me laugh so hard. It, it's such a good edit in general. It's not even about Death Grips, but it's a good edit. Oh, you're leaving. I am indeed leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, I knew that you would leave the forest someday, Marsh, because you are different from me and my friends. I'm different. But that's okay, because we'll be friends forever, won't we? We will be friends forever. I don't need that. I don't need you. I got Zelda. I want you to have this ocarina. Please take good care of it. Gotcha. I'm going to trade it in for a better one later on in the game, but that's not important. Oh, if this is your first time seeing a Zelda playthrough, like, I'm really deeply apologetic. I haven't been paying attention to the game at all. Um, Fairy Ocarina. This is a mentor from Seria. But, I mean, you should have played this game by now. And if you haven't, just stop watching this and go play the game. Um, or if this was, like, your introduction to see if you wanted to play the game, like, now you know. Like, that you should play it, because it's fucking good. Um, ooh, let's play a little tune. Let's play a little tune. We should kiss. <laughs> but, you know, they're kids, so... I guess that would be cute, right? Like, it's, it's not a sexual thing. They're too young for it to be a sexual thing. It would just be, like, a cutesy, like, his first kiss. 
type of deal. My first kiss was when I was nine. Um, to a very nice young lady. And I will always cherish that memory. In a race car bed. People don't really talk about their first kisses, right? I feel like that was a conversation topic I heard a lot in the 2000s, but that's kind of died. Maybe because I was a kid. Oh, sweeping score of Hyrule. The beautiful, beautiful Hyrule Field. Uh, I'm a big fan of Hyrule Field. I think most people are. I don't think that's like a very... <laughs> like a, a strange opinion to have. Um, uh, okay, let's get it. Let's get the ocarina. Let's play a little tune. I want to play something. Okay, that was fun. Um, I hope you could hear that. Because I wasn't talking. I was just kind of playing around with the ocarina. Excuse me. I had to indulge myself a little bit, right? I've been talking for a very, very long time. So, I deserve a little bit of indulgence, I believe. A little bit of decadence. It appears that, yes, I hate this guy. I mean, when you first play, he's, he's very uh, important. I love his design, like, stylistically. Like, he looks fucking beautiful. Um, but, he kind of reminds me of the, the cat from Alice in Wonderland, but um, mainly because he's in a tree, not because they're similar in any way. I guess they're kind of, they're not really similar. He's kind of more stern and straightforward, and the cat's kind of high on PCP. Um, if you're lost and don't know which way to go, look at the map. Oh yeah, no fucking duh. Oh gosh, I, I guess I'm not being respectful to people who wouldn't know that. Find the map. On the map screen, you will also see a flashing dot showing you which way you should go next. Okay. Did you get all that? Yes. Gosh, I've done that too many times, pressing no. All right, then. I'll see you around. Yeah, I'll see you around, man. You're a cool dude. Yeah, we'll hang out. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a beer. We'll have some nuts. Maybe uh, work out a little bit. Okay, so Hyrule Field. We made it. First dungeon complete. Woo! Um, awesome. So, okay. I will see you guys for part two of this, and I will see you guys for more Wind Waker, because that's also what's going on right now. And like, comment, subscribe if you would like to see more. Um, and I hope you guys have really productive and happy days. I hope you find the love of your life, and you, um, you, you cherish that individual with all of your heart. Um, and you never not appreciate them. You always appreciate them, I guess I should say. So, yeah, that's it. Um... I will save the game. And I guess I'm keeping you here for this because I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye.